I've flown into Malaga to drive the new Mercedes AMG C63 E Performance. It's a very controversial car because it's a four cylinder hybrid instead of a V8. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this car, show you around the exterior, the interior, take it for a drive on the road. On the racetrack, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. The only thing to do now is decide which color to test drive. The black one, the silver one, or maybe a blue estate over there. Decisions, decisions. Buy, sell, car, wow. Here we are then, an exciting moment, starting up the new Mercedes-AMG C63S e-performance. Put on the brake, hit the starter, and that's what I'm greeted by. No V8 bursting into life. Okay, this is unusual, this is a brave new world. I'm actually gonna go into electric mode. This thing has a six kilowatt hour battery pack, and it's supposed to be good for driving in electric power alone at up to 12, or 13 kilometers. I've got 93% of the battery. I'm gonna see how far I can drive on electric power alone. Seems weird, but let's do it because never done this in a C63 before. So Mercedes has obviously organized a separate location for the cars. And I'm not sure I'm supposed to go. Maybe I'm sorry. Can you say that again, please? Oh, I don't want you chiming up the whole time. They haven't fixed that yet. The, the system doesn't sorry. know when- I'm not sure which time zone you mean. Yeah, so that's one thing that hasn't changed with the new C63. Do you know what? Just driving around in electric only mode when you're going at slow speeds just seems absolutely fine. Now we're heading out onto the motorway. I'm going to pick up speed. Will it still stay in electric mode? Oh my gosh, the pickup. That's all right. That's just like a normal electric car. I'm actually impressed. I think, you know, if you're just like nipping to the shops or something like that and you've got this car and you don't want to heat cycle the engine, you're just going to run it on electric only mode while you're just nipping about doing your errands. Anyway, let's see how much battery I've got left because I've done eight kilometers. 29%. What's it going to do when it runs out of electricity? I imagine obviously the petrol motor is going to take over. Look, here we go. Electric program currently unavailable. So it's switched off electric program. But I'm still in electric mode because look, the engine hasn't started up yet. So let's see how far we can go. It switched me into comfort mode. That battery must be depleting now. Let's have another look. 24 percent do you know what i think we might actually beat that suggested range don't kick in engine do not kick in never thought i'd say that in a c63 oh the engine's just kicked in there we go that's it so the battery's down to 21 percent so it looks like what it's done is that it lets it go down to 20 percent and then it needs to get the engine in because it always needs to keep some battery in reserve if you need to get the car to deliver its full performance with the engine combined with the electric motor that was interesting it did 11 kilometers on electric power alone that's enough for most people just nipping around in their like local town and stuff like that now let's see how quickly it can charge up one of the things about this battery is it's supposed to be fast charging and also fast power delivery as well for when you want to have some fun so i'm actually going to whack it into race mode now i'm going to floor it see what the gearbox and motor and engine combined how they all work together that was quite interesting i noticed when i floored it the motor gave the power first so i felt that initial pickup coming from the motor then the gearbox changed down and the engine came in there's hardly any turbo lag either that pickup was smoother than i felt when i drove the mg gt e performance so once again i'm going to floor it yeah you feel the motor go first a slight delay while the engine and gearbox sort themselves out and then it's off but the engine it comes on strong pretty quick you, know, you can't believe really it's a two liter four cylinder there is a lot going on though there is a lot going on thing is do i reckon the sensation you get from it when you floor it is better than when you floored the old v8 do you know what? i'm gonna have to do a bit more driving to be sure about it all right let's see where we are with the old uh, battery charge so already 55 percent full it does charge quickly also let's have a look at the economy so this thing is doing 10.4 liters per 100 kilometers over the 23 kilometers i've done which is around if i did the maths in my head quickly 27 miles per gallon which considering it's a car with 680 horsepower is pretty decent let's have a look at what exactly is powering this car so you've got a two litre four cylinder petrol engine which is mounted longitudinally it puts out 476 
horsepower. So it's a similar engine as in the A45S, but they've turned the wick upon it slightly. It is the most powerful two litre four-cylinder production engine in the world, and it's been assembled by Shafat Malik. Now, one of the key features of this car is the turbocharger, which is here. It is actually electrically controlled, so it's initially spun up so there's no lag. Also, the big thing about this car is the fact that it's a hybrid. You see, on the rear axle is a 204 horsepower electric motor. That has a two-stage gearbox, and the second gear comes in at over 80 miles an hour, so it's only really for high-speed use, that second gear. Now, that electric motor can send power to the rear axle or push it forward as well to the front axle because of course this car has an all-wheel drive system when you combine that with a nine-speed automatic gearbox and launch control it should be pretty quick off the mark but exactly how quick let's find out okay here we are moment of truth i'm going to launch the new c63 what's it going to do i've got my specialist timing gear down here supposed to do 60 in 3.4 seconds i think it might be quicker but how much quicker let's do this Go. Oh yeah, good. Not 60. What are you going to do? 3.05. What's the quarter mile? What's the quarter mile? Oof. 11.32. I had to break for a turn. I think I was breaking before I did the quarter mile. Let's go again. Zero four. Come on, give me that quarter mile time. Oh, 11.2! 11.2! <laughs> Once again, I was on the brakes for the turn. I think it can go a little bit quicker. 3.04 though. That is so quick. Right, one last time. I've moved my specialist timing gear up here so I don't have to look down. Let's go. Zero three. Eleven point two one. That's insanely fast. <laughs> this car is crazy. Now what we're going to do is run through some 0 to 60 times and standing quarter mile times as some of this car's competitors, so you can see how they all compare. Is the C63? the daddy. Let's find out. All that performance is worth nothing if the car doesn't have the chassis to make the most of it. Now AMG has fitted upgraded brakes to the C63S and you can have the calipers painted red. If you want you can upgrade to carbon ceramic brakes as well then you get some gold calipers. The C63 gets a rated sport suspension over the standard C-Class and you get adaptive dampers as standard. There's three different settings which you can choose between. There's comfort, which is soft, you know, a little bit floppy. Then the sport, which is stiffer. And then there's the sport plus, which is fully stiff. You also get an electronically controlled rear differential as standard. So that can send power to the outer wheel with the most grip for better corner exiting traction. Also, it's good for leaving skid marks, but the good kind. There's lots of different drive modes. So I've already shown you electric only mode. And of course there's comfort, sport, sport plus, and then race. And look at this, if I go all the way back, there's a B mode, which actually hold the battery at your chosen state of charge. And if I press that button in, you can also alter the amount of regen braking. So you can have it off. So the car basically three wheels, put it on. So it's like the engine braking that you get from a normal internal combustion engine car when you lift off the throttle. Then you can go to stage two, which is a bit more aggressive regen braking. And finally, the most aggressive, which Mercedes claim is one pedal drive. But is it really? No, it's not. I need to brake. I need to brake. I had to use the actual brake. That's two pedals. But what upgrades has AMG done to the design of the C-Class for this C63? So it's got the AMG grille with the vertical slats. It's obviously more aggressive, more aggressive even than the C43. Huge air intakes down here and slats in the grille can shut for improved aero if you're just cruising. You have a big Mercedes badge there, but also the AMG badge up on there. A power dome in the bonnet with real vents. Who knew? Unfortunately, here at the side, 
there are some fake vents. But I'm going to forgive the car because it does look pretty aggressive. One of the reasons for that is that it's actually about 76 millimeters wider at the front. Mmm, flared wheel arches. Filled with some nice alloy wheels. Standard you get 19s, but you can upgrade to 20s. Another thing you should know is that the front of the car is about 50 millimeters longer than the standard C-Class to accommodate that hybrid system. You also get side skirts here, which are an upgraded carbon fiber on this particular car, and you get upgraded carbon fiber on the door mirrors. I like the paint as well. This matte paint, yeah. I'd probably go for this. At the back, you've got a boot lip spoiler. This one's in carbon fiber. Speaking of which, the diffuser here is in carbon fiber as well. Not sure how much that diffuse is. Then you've got the AMG quad tail pipes, which are a bit fake because actually there's just one exhaust in there and there's a deeper rear bumper there on the standard C-Class. Plus, of course, you get the AMG badging there and C63S in red to signify it's an e-performance model. I like the look of this car, but how about you? Vote in the pink comment. Do you prefer the look of this or the BMW M3? Here on the inside, the major changes with the C63 are these lovely AMG sport seats. Look at this. They have these little venti bits there kind of remind me of the sports seats that a rival German manufacturer put on its performance saloon. Hmm. Still, they are very body hugging and they hold you in place nicely. Very good, very nice. Very good, very nice. Where did that come from? Anyway, the C63 also gets this carbon fiber on the dash rather than black piano plastic. And you have an AMG sports steering wheel with Alcantara on it as well. A nice metallic shift pedals. Then there are the two buttons here which control your different driving modes. Whoa, easy, damn boy, damn boy. That's the thing about hybrids, you never know if they're off or on. It was definitely on, and I'm gonna turn it back on again because I wanna light these buttons up. <gasps> so confusing. Anyway, and then you have this other dial here which can cycle through different things such as the AMG dynamics, the noise from the sound system and the engine, because it's all got fakery sounds. Then you've got your suspension settings and other bits and pieces like that. That's basically it really. In the back, it's pretty much the same as a normal C-Class, so there's a decent amount of room, but you do get some AMG trim on the seats. Look at that. Hmm. Sporty. Obviously, the boot capacity will be the same as the C43, right? 455 litres, which is slightly less than a BMW M3 xDrive, which has 480 litres of space. What's going on here? Oh no, there seems to be a hump in the floor which is eating into space. That's because you have the electric motor and the battery pack underneath there. Hmm. Oh no, that's really got me worried about something. Hopefully there isn't the same problem with the estate version because this is supposed to be all about practicality. Come on. Oh no, look at it. Yep, yeah, they've raised up the boot floor and there's the hump again. Wait a minute, what's this? It looks like a luggage tag made out of carbon fiber from the Autora launch. <laughs> Some journalist left this. Who is it? It's Matt Saunders. He works for Autocar. Hi, Matt. I'm stealing your lovely carbon fiber luggage tag. I'm going to scrub out the Saunders and the extra unnecessary tea. It's mine. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. There is no getting away from the fact that a four cylinder does not sound as good as an eight cylinder. I'm going to rev this car up. Also, I'm not sure if you can notice, there's some electronic noises added to the sound through the speakers. I can turn that off, or down at least, by pressing this button, and then... <laughs> it sounds like that. I'm going to put it back on, see if you can notice the difference. It's all a bit weird. I'd much rather listen to a V8 rev. Because of all the hybrid tech, this is a heavy car. It weighs in at 2.1 tonnes. Now here's a quick comparison of that weight compared to its competitors and the old C63. Yeah, it's a bit of a fatty. Depending on which drive mode you're in, you get different power output from the electric motor. So if you're in comfort mode, it's only delivering 25% of its 204 horsepower, so you're not running in the full 680 horsepower. When you're in sport mode, you have 65% of the motor's power. When you go into sport plus, you have 80%, and it's the same when you're in race mode, though the engine is constantly recharging the battery, so you've always got power when you need it. However, regardless of which mode you're in, if you floor the throttle, there's a kick down switch, which will always give you the 204 horsepower from the electric motor. So the full 680 horsepower. However, if you were to drive this car up a steep hill constantly and flooring the throttle, eventually you'll work your way through that battery. And while the engine will then start to charge it, so there's always a minimum amount of charge, some of the power from the engine will be diverted to charge up the battery, which can't be put through the wheels. So you won't be having a full 680 horsepower going through the wheels. You'll be back down to 476 horsepower from that petrol engine or something there or thereabouts. 
Oh, it's confusing. Speaking of which, while this car may have 680 horsepower, it's limited to 155 miles an hour, unless you pay AMG extra for the AMG driver's pack, and then it'll do 174 miles an hour. However, that's still six mile an hour less than a BMW M3 competition can do. And that brings you on to the price. You see, because of all the hybrid tech on this car, it's gonna be rather expensive. You're talking around 90,000 pounds. However, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about the AMG C63S. In the old V8 C63, which was rear drive in the UK, you really felt the ESP constantly cutting in. However, on this car, the ESP is so very good that you can run it on track, drive like a loon, in ESP on mode, and you don't feel any interference at all. It's so seamless and very, very clever. There's also a drift mode that allows you to do big, silly skids. You get rear wheel steering as standard, which makes the car both more stable, yet more agile. It's engineering witchcraft. There's extra chassis bracing over a standard C-Class, so you get this strut brace here and there's also a bracing plate underneath the engine. You get those on the C43. What you don't get on the C43, which you get on this, are extra bracing points around the car as well, including a special X-brace just by the motor and battery in the back, in the boot. It makes the chassis stiffer. AMG spent a load of money on a special driving simulator to develop the AMG One, and they've actually used that to develop this car. So it's had hours and 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 hours of development. You get specific AMG driving displays and gauges, such as this Super Sport mode and track pace. More on that in a second. You also get AMG graphics in the heads-up display and specific AMG modes here on the screen, such as AMG Performance, which does all your monitoring of the vehicle's function. And look, an IWC clock, though I'd rather have a normal IWC clock like you've got in the old car. Anyhow, you do have this other feature called track pace. So there's a lot of different tracks listed in here, which AMG have mapped out. And what it does is allow you to do the overtake function that they do in Formula One. So this car will give its full 680 horsepower when you floor the throttle and activate that kick down switch. And this system will tell you when you should do that at what part on a track to go as fast as possible. All I need to do now is dry it down. I'm about to go out on track in the new C63 SE Performance. And I've got to have a little bit of an induction process, not to tell me about the track, but more about the car and a feature we're going to use for it. So I've got to do that, learn the track, and I've also got to learn the new features on the car, try those out while driving on the new track, while assessing the car and not crashing and talking to you. Wish me luck. So, so you're going to tell me about boost yeah, mode. That's what I, what I like to do now. So my or my recommendation is that we uh, try out this uh, boost strategy. Okay, so I'm going into yeah. the menu. One more. Yeah. Now you can select with this uh, menu when you go on this. Hot lap or endurance. Are we going to do a hot lap? We can do hot lap. So what will hot lap do? Just give me full I, boost. I explain you. I explain you. Go on endurance. Oh, not hot lap then. The car is automatic in uh, race mode. Mm -hmm. There are two boost sectors, okay? Boost shows you on the display with boost. Mm -hmm. When it shows boost, it's just next straight. Then it starts blinking, uh, but just watch on the boost. Not release the gas, just go off kick down. Can I drive it? Can I just yeah. drive it? Okay, there's all this stuff about boost mode. I have to look down at my dials to see it. I'm not sure that it's properly engaging, and quite frankly, I need to focus on staying on track and seeing what it feels like. So I'm going to just ignore boost mode. Because then I was looking down and I got a bit too close to the guy and it's all just a bit sketch. Let's just drive the bloody car, eh? Oh, you can feel the weight dropping down into the turn. Other than that though, it seems pretty agile. The weight turns in response to the steering on track is actually very good. That rear wheel steering doing its thing. <laughs> Whoa, it's got some poke out of there. I was boosting, but I don't know whether I'm doing the boost thing proper. I don't know. Yeah, just into there. The rear axle steering is so good. You can get the car rotating. The emergency braking kicked in then because it thought I was going to crash in front of the, the lead driver. Oh, you can feel the weight through there, that yeah, sudden change in direction. And the, uh, there we go, boosting! You can see me just dropping the car behind and I'm hard on boost. It feels quite agile though, moving about beneath you. 
I actually like it a lot more than I thought I would because it is heavy and you do notice that weight, you do. But it doesn't mean that it's bad and it doesn't mean that it's not fun. Here we go. Boosting! <laughs> It handles with a nice balance. It turns in well, it rotates nicely. You just can feel that weight. Right, now if the German man on the radio will quit chatting, I might be able to give a quick summary of it on track. Shut up! I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm gonna turn him off. There we go. So, on track, you can feel this car's weight, but it doesn't mean it's not fun. It tells you what it's doing. You can really get it rotating into bends. It's very responsive to the steering. It's also responsive to the throttle. Yeah, I'm not in big slides or anything like that, but when you start to oversteer a little bit like and you wanna just level the car out, just get on the throttle and you'll get that traction again. I'm sure if you then jab the throttle really hard, you can send it sideways. It seems like a playful car that they've built that into it. I would like more time behind the wheel on the track to really get to explore some more of its limits, but so far I am impressed. But there is no getting away from the fact. I almost went off the track there, too busy chatting. I think I'll turn this back on. Anyway, I am impressed. <laughs> You might have been looking at my dials going, it said boost on screen, it said boost on screen. But what I was told was that it would say boost very, very big on screen, flashing for when I was supposed to do the boost. But I never saw that. This is what it should look like. I didn't see that. Or maybe I was just too busy concentrating on going around the track without falling off it. I don't know. Do you know what? There's one thing I haven't done with this car yet, and that's drive it on a twisty road. Well, look what I have in front of me. This road is amazing. And as the sun is setting, I'm gonna try this car out really where it matters most. And I have to say, here, it's really impressive. I've got the gearbox in manual mode, and there's no kind of confusion between the electric motor or the petrol engine or the gearbox now. All I'm getting. Hello there is a suicidal coat. <laughs> Fortunately, the brakes on this car are really good. And so too is the way this system works to just propel you out of corners. The pickup on the engine with that electrified turbocharger, the torque fill and the assistance of the electric motor, this puts its power down so well. And of course you've got that four wheel drive traction. It really is a quick car. I could cover ground in this faster than I could the old C63, no doubt about it at all. Question is though, would I be having more fun? In some ways, I think I would. First of all, I'd have to think about managing the power a bit more because it'd just be rear wheel drive. Then there's the fact that that V8 engine is just so glorious. The noise it makes, the way it pulls. Yeah, I do like this hybrid system and I think it's impressive and it is ultimately quicker, but it just doesn't have the emotion of the V8. So then, overall, I have to say, what AMG's engineers have done with this car is pretty amazing. However, I feel that they built a car they had to build because of regulations, you know, a little bit like Formula One. <laughs> Whereas it's not quite the car that they would have built if they had the choice and there were no regulations. And with that in mind, if I was in the market for this because of the price point, I'd probably get myself an E63 S AMG instead but move quickly because soon that will be a hybrid too. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like, click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to the car way to sell your car. It is the easy way to sell your car.